Welcome to Cashback Watches. My name is Tim, and in this episode, I'd like to speak about Freddy C. Frederick Constant, a viewer complained pretty bad that at least I should learn the proper pronunciation. And so it's not Freddy C, it's not Frederick Constant, it's Frederic Constant. And I want to speak again about Frederic, Frederic Constant because in this video, I found out that I like the brand, that I like the watches. And so I was really pleased and really excited when I saw this watch on eBay with very bad images. Very bad images, but I thought, no, this cannot be such an ugly watch. Um, bad images, maybe the re reality is better. And then I've bought the watch, relatively cheap, and yeah, the parcel arrived, I've opened the parcel, and sometimes it works. Sometimes watch hunting works. You open the parcel, you put it on the wrist, and you think, yeah, wonderful. And I'm not kidding. It's a wonderful piece. It's a commem commem commemorative, commemorative watch, a commemorative watch um, for picking to Paris. This is a famous race. And before I show you the watch in the light box, I'd like to speak a little bit about the race. And now you may ask, no, 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 no. I've never heard of this race. And cannot be so exciting, cannot be so important, but this is wrong. Um, I think information about that race will bring you a step forward. It will really add something because this is one of the craziest races I've ever heard, heard of. First, imagine you have to drive from Peking to Paris, 16,000 kilometers in your modern car. What would you say through Asia, through Europe, 16,000 kilometers? You would think, um, um, well, possible, possible, or at least I would think that, possible, but 16,000 kilometers without any malfunction, without accidents. Um, yeah, possible, but not an easy task. Very exhausting, of course, driving 16,000 kilometers. But what would you think if I'd said you have to do this without any sort of autobahn or highway? Only basic roads, only the trail through the desert, so to speak. Um, yeah, would be uncomfortable, right? The Im imagination would be rather uncomfortable. And then I would add, and you have to do this without the ex existence of gas stations and garages along the road. And then you would say suicide mission. No, <laughs> this is exactly, exactly what they have done back then. And I'm not talking about the year 2000. I'm not talking about 1950 or 1940, 30, 20, 10. I'm talking about the year 1907. And I mean, you have seen images of those cars back then, right? They, they look basically like a carriage had sex with a sewing machine. And so, yeah, <laughs> cra crazy task. But the famous newspaper Le Matin wrote in January 1907, what needs to be proved today is that as long as a man has a car, he can do anything and go anywhere. Is there anyone who will undertake to travel this summer from Peking to Paris by automobile. And then every rich, crazy motorhead in Europe wanted to, to attend this race. And they've done this without any <laughs> rules. Basic rule was you have to make it and first car wins. First car wins. This was the only, only reglementation. Regl reglement. And the price for this race, the, 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 the price for this race was, da 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 drum roll, um, a magnum bottle of champagne made by Mom. But now you may ask, without gas stations, how is this possible? Uh, believe it or not, they used camels to transport gasoline to the road, to the roads, to the, to the track. And this was the only help <laughs> for, the, for the driver. And the winner was a gentleman from Italy, Scipione Borghese, from the famous family, the Borghese's. 10th Prince of Sulmona. And yeah, he, and I really like this aspect because um, it's this nice cliche that, that all Italian people are crazy about motorsports and cars. And yeah, Italian gentlemen have won this, this race. And now let's go back to the watch. Let's talk a little bit about the watch. Oh, I can show you the, the, um, the box before we go on the light box. This is a standard Frederic Constant, excuse me, Frederic Constant box. Inside you find a metal plate with the, with the, with the race. Yes, there you see a map with the red line here, and yeah. I, but I think we, we should we should check it in the light box, and after the light box, I will tell you a few words about commemorative watches in in general. I think would be a good idea. I think. 
little interruption guys very sorry but this is a little advertising on my own account i was invited to a podcast buttoned up podcast link in the description and it's hosted by the channels the modest man and the cavalier huge channel they represent together some zillion of subscribers i think and they asked me and um, to join them on the buttoned up podcast very exciting for me you can hear this that i was very excited during that hour and there you can hear some background information about case back watches about the analyzing series about day jobs and yeah daily struggles and yeah maybe you enjoy to hear that podcast link in the description and now let's go on here we are with our frederic constant picking to paris and the first thing i'd like to hear pretty much was the color the color on the dial this red stripe here together with the very big numerals in white in disease in white hands in white and this then together with the, with the outer scale here with the minutes yeah perfect it's it's a perfect mixture of of design and utility and so i really really like this look um the watch would be perfect in my humble opinion without the date i mean imagine here a three this would be uh, would pure this would be an undamaged design and, th and this this solution with the with the with the date is handy of course but yeah it damaged the design a bit and now let's go over the basic specifications we're looking at a case diameter of 40 millimeters and luck to luck is 46.5 and the thickness is only 10.5 so a very very contemporary modern watch when it comes to the dimensions and uh, i personally like my watches a little bit smaller but this watch wears relatively um subtle relatively subtle relatively small and so i'm really happy with that watch this is one of the few watches i really will um wear maybe for four weeks and so yeah i'm really looking forward to this okay and here you see the case back here you can see a map with the red line the red racing track so to speak reminds me a little bit of those old film intros where you can see um, um, a map and this this red line in motion like the intros of the old indiana jones films and on the case back you find another information about this limited thing the limited edition limited to 2888 pieces which in my opinion is a normal edition a pretty normal edition this is not exactly a rare watch this is brushed here by the way and high polished um, the this part of the case is high polished a little bezel type of thing here also high polished good luck form good luck form this makes it so subtle on the wrist i think yeah really really convincing and what i like um, as well is um, I, i'm not the biggest fan of of contrast colors you see this red stitching here um, i find this uh, often too loud but in this case it works this case it works perfectly and by the way this is really a hell of a strap this is really substantial thick leather with a good feel signed clasp and it feels pretty good on the wrist i think i put it on the wrist and then you can see it one more time with better light let me do this the strap is relatively long so i'm on the last hole here with my 17.5 centimeter wrists uh, take the camera and here it is here it is i mean this is a really good looking watch what don't you think huh this is a really really cool piece especially if you have a shirt i mean i'm wearing now this shirt but i have a, a, a shirt with a little bit of some elements of red in it and it looks awesome together with the watch really awesome okay let's operate it I mean, this is not, not very special. Inside is an ETA or a Zilliter. I don't, I don't even know it. And you know why? Because for me, it's simply not interesting. It's simply not interesting with this rather entry-level watches if it's in a, a Zilliter or an ETA. I don't give a damn about that, to be frank. Um, I want an automatic in this case, and that's it. And I want that it runs, and this runs pretty good. And what I like here is that, um, focus again, that it's re relatively precise, the good connection between hands and crown so that I can operate this very precise. And the day changes with a nice clack exactly at midnight. As you can see, Chuck, it's good regulated. And yeah, that's it. It's hackable. See that? It's hackable. It's so perfect, perfect. If it's Solita such and such, EDA such and such, I don't give a damn. In this case, there's, this may differ from from watch to watch so um hand winding as well 
but of, uh, overall not very special if it comes to the movement. But good working, keeps time, excellent, really happy with that thing. Okay, now let's speak about commemorative watches in general. Um, the question is, does the commemorative aspect add value to the watch? And my experience is um, no, <laughs> on the contrary. On the contrary, sometimes you have a nice uh, you have a nice watch, and then there is something on the dial with people d do not enjoy so much, like the Olympic rings or something like that. And then is the, the watch is uh, the, the value is reduced, in fact. And so, if somebody wants to talk you in to buy a commemorative watch, then ask yourself, what would you pay without the commemorative aspect? What would you pay for the naked watch, so to speak? Often, I'm under the impression that the commemorative aspect is an excuse for the manufacturer to produce another limited edition. And as I said, um, this is a limited edition, 200 pieces, 300 pieces may, or 400, but a few thousands, ah, uh, no, this is a really normal edition. So you have to like the watch without the limitation, without the commemorative aspect in my, in my eyes. This would be better, I think. Okay, that's all about the watch. Um, if you like, visit me on Instagram. I show their watches, but also pictures from my um, life as a musician and a um, relatively normal human being. And now let me thank you very much for your attention and maybe until next time. Mm -hmm.